Hey, guys, Arm here. Today I'm bringing the latest Isekai anime chronicles of an aristocrat reborn in another world. The boy arrives on a magical island where a year is equivalent to a day in the real world. He has to be trained here for five years to become much stronger. But in the real world, his harem thinks he has been missing for five days, and they are very worried. What funny plots will happen when they meet again? Let's see together. In the last video, the gods found Cain a mysterious master, Yuya, who turned out to be the first king of the kingdom. Yuya, like Cain, comes from Earth. He is over 300 years old, but still looks like a young man. This is because Yuya has become a god, so he does not grow old. Yuya needs to train Cain to be stronger, but Cain thinks he's strong enough to test him. Yuya asks Cain to snatch the cookies from his hand, while Cain fails instantly. That's when Yuya reveals to Cain that he sealed a demon king, Aaron, 300 years ago. But the seal has weakened recently, and Aaron, who has the power to create wars and destroy the world, may be awakening. Yuya and the gods cannot interfere with issues happening in the mortal world directly, so they place hope on Cain to defeat Aaron. But now Cain is apparently not strong enough, and he needs to be trained. Yuya then takes Cain to a magical island he created. Here a year is like a day in the normal world. Cain needs to defeat the various powerful monsters on the island to reach the house located at the highest part of the island. Cain has never faced an opponent who could pose a threat to him, but encountering the powerful and numerous monsters on this island, Cain feels the pressure for the first time. Meanwhile, Cain's family and comrades have found him missing, yet they're not worried because Cain is strong in their eyes. But in fact, Cain is now facing a crisis. His physical strength and magic power have been exhausted, while there are still many monsters nearby. Just then, Cain spots a wound white wolf. As he heals the white wolf with his only remaining magical power, he blacks out. Luckily, when Cain is unconscious, the white wolf defeats nearby monsters and protects him. Replenished, Cain finally wakes up. He quickly becomes partners with the white wolf. They fight and adventure on the island together. Four years later, Cain manages to reach the highest house. Both he and the white wolf have grown up a lot. Now he can summon or hide the white wolf at any time through magic. But Kane's training doesn't end here. Yuya finds Kane a powerful warrior, Dura, as his opponent. Only if he defeats Dura does his training reach the final success. However, Kane loses to Dura the first time he tries to fight. Dura then takes Kane home to take care of him, and they will live together until Kane wins. Before Kane starts the training with Dura, Yuya tells Kane a secret. Kane is an orphan, but he was not abandoned by his parents. It turns out that Kane's parents, along with Yuya, were summoned to another world. They fought and adventured together, becoming stronger with Yuya. However, they died in the final showdown with Eren. In other words, Eren is Kane's enemy. When Kane learns about this, his will becomes firmer. In the following year, Dura and Kane fight almost every day. Although Kane loses every battle, he isn't discouraged because he has to be stronger. After continuous training, Kane manages to beat Dura. After that, Kane comes to his parents' grave to mourn them. Yuya tells Kane that they had been thinking about him until they died, and they kept looking for a way to return to Earth. Hearing this, Kane is so moved that he couldn't help crying. Suddenly, Yuya takes out a cookie, and this time Kane grabs the cookie instantly, which means Kane already has the strength to fight Eren. Yuya recognizes Kane's strength and agrees to transport him back to the original world to prevent Kane's family from being surprised. Yuya also changes Kane's body to what it was five years ago. Before he leaves, Dura gives him a dragon as a pet, and Yuya also gives him a sword. When Kane returns to his own world, he has been considered to be missing for five days. His family and comrades are all very worried about him. During the days he was missing, Telestia and Silk learn to bake cookies while waiting for him. When they bring out the hand-baked cookies, Kane is very touched, immediately eating them up. For Kane, he hasn't seen them for five years, and he misses the life so much. When he returns to the kingdom, he immediately tells the king about his experience. The king doesn't believe in such unusual stories at first. Until Cain takes out Yuya's sword, he finally believes that Yuya is not only alive but also becomes a god. Previously, the leader of the Adventurer's Guild gave Cain a task to fight the bandit group, and Cain can be promoted to an A-rank adventurer after he finishes it. But before he could perform the task, he went to practice with Yuya. Luckily, in this world, only five days passed, and Cain is still in time to perform his task. So he sets off immediately. After he comes to the place where the bandit group frequents, he casts flying magic to fly through the air and observe the situation. Successfully finding the traces of the bandit group, they are robbing an escorting team, and the team's guards happen to be Kane's former teachers. The red-haired one is Millie and the green-haired one is Nina. They have already fought against the bandit group and are wounded as a result. Kane immediately treats their injuries. 
After that, he easily defeats the bandit group. For Kane, the most difficult part of this battle is how to control his power so as not to kill them directly. Millie and Nina haven't seen Kane for a long time, and they tell him about their experiences over the years. When they know that Kane has become an A-rank adventurer and a baron, they are very surprised. When Kane returns to the city, he discovers that the escorting team he is protecting belongs to his friend's family. Soon after, he goes to the Adventurer's Guild with Millie and Nina. After completing this task, Kane successfully gets promoted to a rank. At this point, an obscene adventurer tries to harass Millie and Nina, and Kane immediately drives him and his companions away. At this time, the adventurer couple, who has made friends with Kane before, also arrives at the Adventurer's Guild. They are relatives of Millie and friends of Nina, and later they go to the restaurant with Kane for dinner. During the meal, Millie and Nina mention the magic box that Kane once gave them. These two boxes have a lot of space and can even fit a house. When the couple learns about this, they are very surprised, because a box with such a large space is just just like a national treasure. They want Kane to make them a magic box, and Kane agrees to their request without hesitation. Last week, Kane took five days off for his practice, and he has to go back to school this week. When learning of this, other people are surprised because the strongest teacher in the school is no match for Kane in strength, and Kane cannot become stronger in school anymore. But he doesn't think he knows enough about the world, and he believes he can still learn a lot of common sense in school. Coincidentally, the school wants to hire adventurers to give lectures to the students during this time, so they decide to go to the school together and see Kane's campus life while teaching. Later, they find out that Kane has no friends at school because he is much more mature than normal children and no one wants to be friends with him. Afterward, they try to get Kane to gain more friends by letting him show his strength. In the subsequent adventurer lesson, they have students show their adventurer cards, which represent the adventurer's level, but Kane doesn't want to show his card in front of his classmates. As an A-rank adventurer, he possesses a gold card, which will definitely cause other people to be frightened or jealous. So Kane lies that he forgets to bring the adventurer card. In the subsequent combat training course, the adventurers want Kane to show his strength, so they arrange for Kane to be the last to do actual combat training. But there are too many students, and after everyone completes the actual combat training, the class is over. In the end, only Kane does not have time to engage in actual combat. He originally wants to test his practice results in battle, so he feels sad. At night, Kane travels to a forest full of monsters, where he tries to confirm his strength by fighting against the monsters. But these monsters are too weak for Kane to show his real strength. However, the noise caused by his battle against the monsters makes the nearby army mistakenly think that the demon lord has awakened, and Kane's father leads the army in an emergency dispatch. After they reach the forest, Kane's father finds Kane's scarf, and he instantly knows that it was Kane who caused the noise. After that, the king warns Kane that such a noise will make the army alert. Kane immediately apologizes for this. Meanwhile, Aaron's seal has weakened more, and he is about to return to this world. That brings the end of Chronicles of an Aristocrat Reborn in Another World episodes 9 and 10. Before the training, Kane was almost invincible, and later, after he is trained by Yuya, he becomes even more powerful. Just when Kane feels lonely when he is too powerful, an opponent worthy of his attention is about to appear. Eren will become Kane's strongest enemy that he has encountered since he arrives in Another World, and I hope that Kane won't feel bored of this opponent. I am really looking forward to the battle between them in the last two episodes, and the battle in which Kane will show his full strength for the first time must be very interesting. If you also like this anime, please like and subscribe. If you want to see the next part of this anime, comment below to tell me. See you in my next video.